Hey, this is Ron Danley again, and I am excited about bringing you this video today. I've been wanting to bring it to you for some time. I've been thinking about this, and I think it's a really important topic. And so what I want to speak to you about today is the idea, the concept, the suggestion that within your life, home, work, whatever, that you and I need to identify and utilize operate within our strengths and we need to do that well so let me ask you today what are your strengths what are those things that you are good at I want to suggest to you that uh, that that's important it's important to know it's important to operate that way let me ask you how might it bless others honor God benefit you uh, further good things in your life and home and world and work if you were to have a better idea of your strengths and were to use those well. I think some great things could happen. So, let me suggest to you that the first part of, or one part of identifying strengths in our lives is simply to pay attention. Self-awareness is an important trait, an important characteristic. And if you don't have it, you need to cultivate that. But so, awareness, pay attention. I want to give you five things to pay attention to. First, pay attention to what goes on within you, within your own heart, mind, spirit, um, as you do certain things. Where does it seem like you're operating within your wheelhouse? Where does it seem like, or with what tasks or efforts, does it almost seem effortless? You're doing work, you're accomplishing things, but man, it, there's an easiness about it. It, it's a fit. It just, it just works. There's a sense of fulfillment. There's a sense that it lines up with your passions and interests. That's one thing you need to pay attention to, to identify your strengths. Another thing is other people's response to you and your work. At what points or what circumstances, what roles, when you're engaged in what kinds of efforts, do people respond well to you and what you're doing? Where do you get traction? Where do you see effectiveness? That's another way to, another thing to pay attention to. A third thing to pay attention to is opportunities because sometimes what happens is you and I begin to get opportunities in line with the things people notice we're good at. Some time ago, I got to help a friend edit and then actually got to help co-author this book he was writing this, that, that he had noticed I have an ability to write. And so he asked me, there was a book he had been working on, and he said, hey, would you help me put this together? Would you get it? You know, let's, let's do this. Would you partner with me? And that was a great opportunity that came about because of a strength, an ability in my life. You may have had certain similar experiences. Another thing to pay attention to is affirmation. Now, we need to be careful with this one because sometimes people give us affirmation that is, it's just to butter us up, so to speak. It's maybe manipulative. It may be insincere. It may be incorrect. It may be misguided. But true, genuine, correct affirmation is another thing to pay attention to. And then trusted confidants. There may be some people in your life that know you well enough that they can speak into your life, and there's a level of trust there and respect and relationship that you can listen to these people as they point out to you, hey, we've been watching, and it seems that these are your strengths. So those are some things to pay attention to. Another aspect or element of identifying your strengths, my strengths, is to get help with assessment. Hey, you know, get some help assessing it, figuring it out, identifying them. One place to go for that, well, before I do that, I, assessment is so important. Sometimes we can assume that we're good at something that we're not good at. I remember years ago uh, thinking that I was a pretty good preacher. And, I mean, I had listened to audio of my preaching, and I thought that I did a pretty good job. But then I saw a video of me preaching. And I realized that evidently what was happening is my notes were too thick, too substantive, and they were in too small a print, 
And so because I was afraid of missing something, I was looking down at my notes so much of the time. I mean, the first time I videoed myself preaching and I saw it, I said, I preached a great sermon in the pulpit. Oh, my word. And for literally years, nobody had said that to me. Nobody had pointed out to me, hey, Ron, you got some great content, but you're buried in your notes. And they may have mentioned me being tied to my notes, but I thought they just meant I was too tied to my notes. I didn't mean, I didn't know they meant I was looking down too much. Oh, my. An assessment changed my preaching delivery. Another thing, a friend of mine, a great friend of mine, years and years ago when, when she was a girl, she wanted to be a singer. And she thought she was a pretty good singer until she recorded herself singing and she listened to it and she turned it off. And she said, wow. And so she began to work because she really wanted to develop that, but she realized that it didn't start out being a strength. And so just a couple of examples, but here are some ways you can assess. You can Use personality and strengths assessments. Some of the ones that I've uh, heard about and come across, things like the Myers-Briggs, things like the DISC, D-I-S-C, profile, things like the Berkman, things like the Gallup Strengths Finder that help you understand how you're wired and how you tend to operate and even what your strengths are so that you can identify those things. Another area for assessment uh, is, again, trusted confidants. I think every person ought to have a small group in his or her life who love the Lord, they love you, they care about God's kingdom and, and, and what's best for you. And I'm not saying they always think they know what's best for you in contradiction to, to maybe what you've discerned, but they really want to see what's best for you, what honors God, what fits the scriptures in your life. So they love you, they care about you, and they know you well enough that they have the ability to speak into your life. And, and you can speak to them, and they can speak into your life. And they can be a good source of helping you identify strengths or even potential strengths that you could develop. And then another is someone kind of like a coach. Good questions, better questions can help you get clarity on the things you're, you're good at, your strengths. So some, those are some of the ways to assess for strengths. Speaking of that, I want to mention to you four types of strengths. Uh, one type is just natural giftedness, just natural abilities. It might be music, it might be math, it might be uh, athletic ability, whatever it is, and it just kind of, it's just kind of hardwired into you. You just, you're a natural. Somewhat connected with that is personality strengths. There are going to be some things about just who you are as a person and your, your workings and tendencies personality-wise that make you better at certain things. So there are, there are natural giftedness areas or things, strengths, and then there are kind of personality strengths. Maybe that's kind of a subheading. And then there are learned and developed skills and abilities. These are things kind of like my friend that I mentioned who wanted to be a singer but didn't start out good at it. And so these are things that for whatever reason you've developed. You've learned those things, but now you're good at them. They're strengths. And then there are spiritual gifts. And those are those things that if you're a born-again Christian, when you got born again, God's Holy Spirit put within you a spiritual gift, an ability to serve God and others in, a cer in certain ways, a certain way or ways. So now that we've talked about strengths and abilities and assessing, paying attention, identifying those things, let me give you five suggestions for utilizing those strengths appropriately, responsibly, helpfully. One is, of course, use them. Use your strengths. How much of the time do we not play to our strengths? We may be trying to do stuff we're just not good at. So I want to suggest to you, use your strengths. Identify them, use them, and let me ask you, is there some way you could rearrange your work, your team, your schedule, whatever, so that you could maybe be operating more so within your strengths? Another suggestion is to sharpen those strengths. There may be some things that you're somewhat good at, but you need to sharpen them. You need to increase them. You need to develop those things. 
A third thing is really a word of caution, and that is be appropriately guarded, be vigilant about your strengths. Because sometimes what happens is we really like to operate within the area of our strengths, and so maybe we become unbalanced in what we're doing. All we do is what we're good at. All we do is what we're strong at. Or it may be that we, we could be tempted to misuse that strength. Let's say you're good at influencing people, getting them to do what you want them to do. Boy, you, you need to be careful that you're ethical about that and that you don't abuse that, either getting people to do what they don't want to do or what they shouldn't do or, or not having the patience with them to let them kind of get on board with it because you can just kind of get them to do it regardless. Um, like I say, maybe being unbalanced. For me, I'm, one of my strengths is that I'm a troubleshooter. And so I have to be careful about also giving affirmation or I'm a bit unbalanced in my leadership. That, that can happen. And so be vigilant. Be appropriately guarded. A fourth thing is identify the gaps in your strengths and supplement them, either through getting, getting, doing some work on, on those things that are gaps or weaknesses, or getting someone around you or on your team, what have you, who can speak into that or evaluate that or help you with that or even take that responsibility because maybe they're good at that thing and you're just not. That's not one of your strengths. And so uh, if you can delegate that, that's one of the ways you can, you can deal with that. But you, you supplement those gaps in your strengths. And then finally, finally, one of my favorite verses is John 15, 5, and it says, Jesus says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain or abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And so this fifth suggestion is to abide in Jesus, stay reliant on Jesus, and surrender your strengths to him in that attitude of dependence and reliance. Because sometimes when we're good at stuff, when we've got strengths, we can be tempted not to maintain an abiding closeness with the Lord and reliance upon Him. We can kind of start thinking, hey, this is a strength. I can do this. I don't need the Lord. I don't need to depend on the Lord. And everything we do needs to be abiding in Christ, surrendered to Him, and dependent on Him, even in those areas of strength. I want you to think about what might happen if you were to identify your strengths, sharpen them, use them appropriately, in surrender to an abiding relationship with the Lord. So he's empowering those things and using those things and directing those things that are already your strengths. Wow, that's exciting. I told you I was excited about putting this video out for you. I want to encourage you in identifying and using your strengths. Take care for now.